just doing homework or learning math right now, you should feel very, very proud of yourself. And even if you aren't learning math, but you're here to just hang out, hang out, hang out, I am very, very thankful for you. So, no matter what level of math you are um, right now, maybe you haven't touched it in a long time, maybe you feel like this stuff is really easy, maybe you haven't even learned it, maybe you're learning it now, or maybe at some point in time you knew this stuff, but you've kind of forgotten it already. It does not matter at all. We're here to just hang out, okay? So, no worries on that front. You can just drift in and out as you please. I'm just here for us to hang out together. So, let's see. Let me start with something like this. Six divided by three. Sorry, six divided by three. And you might go, Margie, that's not a fraction. What are you talking about? Bear with me. So, six divided by three. This expression, one way to think about it, if I have six things, four, five, six, so I'll just represent them as circles. In math, you know, it's always about pies and cakes and cookies and whatnot, but it doesn't matter, whatever you please, rubber band balls if you like those, <laughs> but um, you have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, so each of these circles represents one, right? One unit. This expression tells me how many groups, if I have six things and I divide them into groups of three, so one, two, three, that can form one group, and one, two, three, that can form another group, then six divided by three tells me that I have one and two, two groups of three. That's one way to look at it. So one and two. And in this case, it doesn't matter what three, like which actual things we break it up into, right? So it could be one, two, three, and one, two, three. So two groups of three. So where it gets a little bit strange is if we did something like six divided by one fourth. And this is what I wanted to sort of build a little bit intuition about because instead of just giving you a rule right off the bat, because you could just look that up yourself, but if I did six divided by one fourth, you can kind of think of it the same way. I'm going to break up my six things into groups of something before it was groups of three, but now it's like, what does it mean to break it into groups of one-fourth? What does one-fourth mean? Well, if you remember your basics with fractions, and if you don't, don't worry, we'll go back and build our foundation, but one-fourth means you can take one thing, so whatever represents your whole thing, and divide it into four equal pieces or equal parts. That's what the bottom of this fraction means. So I can take my one, my one circle represents one, and I break it into four equal parts. And I can do that however I want to. You can um, just do it simply like this if you want to. You could kind of do it like It's all gonna be the same piece, right? So if you break them into one, two, three, four, if you break a one into four parts, each of those pieces is one fourth of the one, which just represents one fourth. So, um, so it's almost like a piece that looks like this, right? So now, with this slightly different perspective, I can see that each of my ones, and I have six ones for my six, each of those contain four four one-fourth pieces, four groups of one-fourth. Here's one, here's one, here's one, and here's one. Here's one, two, three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. <laughs> one, and two, and three, and four, right? So, we have four pieces. One, two, three, 
I mean I meant each of these one fourths are different colors, but one fourth. So each of these ones have four one fourth pieces. So that means between one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I have four plus four plus four. So twelve, sixteen, eighteen. Um wait, whoops. Sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if each of those six have four, then you have six times four. Six times four, which gives me a total of twenty-four one-fourth pieces in my six. So that's kind of the intuition. It's like I'm gonna break each of these one into smaller, um, just like a different perspective, into four one-fourth pieces. So that if I have my same six as I did before, my same six, if I break them up into groups of these one-fourths, each of those ones actually have four one-fourth pieces, so I actually end up doing something equivalent to multiplying. So, um, between these two cases, you can see if I take my six and I divide by something greater than one, say three, I am, I'm just breaking them up into groups, and so if it's a bigger group than just one, then I expect some number that is less than my original number, six. But if I'm actually dividing it into these pieces that are smaller than one, then each of those one contain, um, contain multiple pieces of the thing that you're dividing by. So in this case, four pieces of those one-fourths. So that if you divide, you see how many of those pieces are in your six, you end up multiplying, you end up with more groups than what you started with just your six, right? So if we did six divided by one, we expect six. Six groups of one, 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 one. If we divide by something more, then I expect less because I'm grouping multiple of those ones together. If I'm dividing by less than one, then each of those one, 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 ones contain multiple of the thing that's less than one. So I would expect more groups than my six. Okay, so now let's go into the actual formula that kind of builds a little bit intuition, but if I were to say, let's start with like two-thirds divided by three-fifths. So this applies whether or not your first number here is um, a whole number or, um, or a fraction. Or in general, whenever you have something divided by a fraction, you just change the divide sign into a multiply, so times, and then you flip-flop that second fraction, the thing that you're dividing by. Meaning, what was on the bottom here goes up on the top, so 5, and what was on the top goes on the bottom, so 5 thirds. So 2 thirds divided by 3 fifths is the same as 2 thirds times 5 thirds. And that's kind of the relationship between divide and multiply. So that flipping and flopping, these are reciprocals of each other, but don't let the word scare you away. <laughs> it just means you flip the top and the bottom. So now you've turned your division problem into 
changed it to a times, I flip flop, so that's times 1 over 3. So 6 times 1 over 3 is 2. So um, it works even when you have whole numbers divided by each other. So that's kind of cool, right? And that's kind of um, intuitively if you take 6 and you divide it into um, parts of 3, then you're basically finding one third of six, right? What is one third of six? So, um, if you think of it this way, though, then it might be easier to think of six divided by three, meaning if I were to take my six and divide uh, six into three even groups, how many pieces or how many, how many things would be in each group? So that's kind of the opposite of what we just said. We said if we're making groups of three, how many groups would there be? But you can also think of it as if I divide it into three groups, how many would be in each group? So, so those are actually equivalent, and that is because of the properties of multiplication and division. Isn't that kind of cute? So from here, you can just do all kinds of problems, any as you like. You can do, you know, one-fifth divided by uh, um, four-fifths. <laughs> so from here you can do one over five, change your divide to a times, and then flip-flop the second, so five over four. And now you can just multiply this however you are comfortable, either multiply across, so five over twenty, and simplify, or you can cross-cancel. So one, one, and you get one fourth. Either way, the focus is going from divide to times. So just notice this pattern. And of course, as usual, if you know you can introduce your negative numbers to all of your patterns for negative and positive numbers, um, you can apply here. So this is not just for people who are learning about uh, division with fractions. This actually applies for. Um, you know, anytime you're using this. So even for people who are in calculus, maybe, maybe you're working on integrals or something. Maybe you're working on the integral of x to the 3 over 2 dx. And you know the pattern of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Well, long story short, you could basically do your n plus 1 is 5 over 2, so you end up with x to the 5 over 2 over 5 over 2 plus c. So here we actually have something divided by a fraction, right? So it's basically x to the 5 over 2 divided by 5 over 2. So forget the variable in the algebra part if you're not familiar with it, but basically we take our divide, turn it into a times, flip-flop my 5 over 2 to be a 2 over 5. And of course, in this case, I should probably write a dot for multiplication instead of a cross like that, because that'll get confusing with our x. But basically, that's 2 fifth x to the 5 over 2, right? So we can apply this dividing by fraction thing everywhere. So, fun, fun, good fun, little side note, but, um, that's pretty much how dividing by fractions go. You can translate it into a multiply by a reciprocal. Now, speaking of this thing, actually, I should point out, sometimes you'll see stuff like this. So, instead of two-thirds divided by three-fifths written like that, let's do a different example. Let's say I have two-sevenths divided by three-fourths, but it's written like this. So sometimes you'll see something like this, or maybe you're working something out, maybe an algebra or something, you move it around, and you get something that looks like this, which is kind of bizarre, right? It's 2 divided by 7, or 2 out of 7, 2 sevenths, divided by 3 fourths. So this fraction line actually is divided by, that's what it really means, it's 1 divided by 3, 1 divided into 3 equal parts is 1 third. So, two sevenths divided by three fourths like this. If you want to simplify it, one way to do it is to write this out as two sevenths, like this top thing, divided by three fourths, and separate it out like this. So, one thing divided by something. So, write it out like the way that we just saw, so that you can do two 
something is like A over B, you could just flip-flop. <laughs> 